All right, tonight we're going to partially build an engine. All nice and painted for a project coming up. This engine's for a friend of mine, Richie. Check out his YouTube channel, Crazy Richie. He's got a pretty nice build series on a on a homemade side by side. Pretty awesome. Anyway, it's a bike I am restoring and modifying for him. I know this has been done a million times, but I'm going to show you how I do it. Probably ain't much different than anybody else. This head's just laying on there. You all his tape off. get the head off the head was just basically lying on there this is a ported and polished head had it laying around I'm gonna stick it on his motor Figured why not. I was gonna build a 212 for myself with this, but I wound up going with the 224. Yeah. <laughs> Probably can't really see down in there, but it's opened up a bit. All the burrs are taken out. And eh, it doesn't matter. Tape off. Yep, knock the uh, camera over. Looks like I missed some paint. Mm hmm. Alright, first things first, we are going to stick the crank in. Bearing feels alright, felt pretty shitty last night, so we are going to zoom in a little bit, take some 30 weight oil. Just dump it in the bearing. There we go, nice. Yeah, I'm not gonna throw any in the cam journal because uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use assembly loop for that. All right, well. Let's get the piston on the new rod first. <clears throat> yeah, I know I keep puffing and puffing them overweight, I'm a little fucking fat. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. I start aggravating myself. Take the wrist pin ring out. Pop the wrist pin out that way. Pop it out. This is junk. This is a cast pressed rod. Like that piece of shit ghost motor that they're making. That they're trying to hustle people out of. $300. Trash. Alright. It's the piston out of the motor. We're going to put that back in. Normally I'd do a flat top, but... He gave me $200 to build this engine, so. Come 
I spent that on a 20,000s longer rod. That's nice. And the billet flywheel. A lot of people don't realize that this actually is a performance upgrade, not just so it don't blow up and take your leg off. There's 32 degrees of timing built into this for a little more power. And these fans don't quite put out as much air. So there's less drag on the motor. That's nice. Alright, get the rod on the piston. Arrow always points down in the block. So, your dipper points down. That's how our rod's going to go in. We'll stick that through there. And we'll dump some oil on it. Actually, you know what? I am going to just some assembly lube. Get this any parts store, auto parts store. This stuff works good. Put your finger in there and clean it all up. Or stick it all in there, whatever. Let me shut up. Alright. Stick your wrist pin through. Good to go. Arrow's pointing down. Dipper's pointing down. You're good to go there. Put the ring back in. Let's see. Come on, get in there. There we go. And it's in there. Let's see. Are we going to focus? Probably not going to focus. One day I'll have a real camera. But it's in there. All right. Let's pop the end off. <clears throat> Damn, they're on there good. <laughs> Man, I don't like when they crank them down. I had a problem with the last rod. Actually, the rod in that motor, the 224, they were hanging up pretty good. And I took it out, out of the box. It took out some aluminum with it. I wasn't happy about that. All right, where's the bearings at? Got the bearings right here. A little notch right there. Right there. That's going to line up with that one. Just stick it right in there. And it's nice and flush with either side. Nice and shiny. We'll put some slop on there. Get a man assembly lube, good to go. Put the bearing on the other side. This stuff is actually really easy. I try to teach a couple of my friends how to do this. I don't know, I guess they're a little intimidated by it or just don't want to buy the tools or whatever. It doesn't matter. This stuff's easy. God knows I'm not uh, too smart. Stick it in there. Nice and flush. And this camera focuses when it wants to. Some assembly lube. That's a little much, but I 
That's all right. And take the rest and stick it on the crank. A lot of YouTubers uh, say you gotta use plastic gauge to measure the clearance. I never had a problem. Never had a problem at all having an ARC rod. So, I don't need stuff like that. I could just tell because, I don't know. I've been doing it so long. Not necessarily these engines, just cars in general. Damn, I scratched the block already. See that mess? I'm gonna have to fix that. Alright. Put our crank in. Make sure that bearing's spinning nicely. Okay. Now we are going to stick the piston down the cylinder. And this is how you do it with a ring compressor. Get these at any parts store, Amazon, eBay, whatever. I got this one out of a box of Lucky Charms or something. Some oil. And just run it around in there. I don't want to use assembly lube in here because it's sticky and stringy and all that other dumb shit. This works just fine, but always lube it up. And then we're going to run some oil around the cylinder too. Good to go. Alright. I'm going to stick the piston in this end because it's the adjustable end. First. We got to line the rings up. Got a ring gap up there. It's right there. And our other ring gap is down here. Yep, thank you for focusing. So, you want these uh, 180 degrees away from each other. And the other ring is a gap there. And a gap there. That's just fine. That'll work. Get this thing in and compress it. Go back on camera. There we go. We're going to run the comp ring compressor down, but we want the skirt to hang out. These ring compressors can be a pain in the ass, but they're like a necessary evil. Come on. Get it nice and tight. Or when if you don't, you try to get them rings down in there. Come on, focus. It will just break when you're putting the ring down in there. All right. Looks good. Time to put it in. Make sure you have the skirt sticking out a little bit. Stick it in. Now, take a hammer, this edge all around here, let's take the end of the hammer and bang that edge in. This way, the ring compressor is set against the block and the ring has nowhere to pop out when you hit the cylinder down the hole. So when that's all ready, take your uh, and your hammer. I do believe a ring came out. See, got to check. Yep. Did I destroy the ring? No. So I said these things are a pain in the ass. Let's redo it.
happens. Let me check the rings again. Rings look okay. Let's do this again. Put it back in. Put it back in and One of the tools I can't stand the most out of all tools are ring compressors because they are just a pain in the ass. I think my ring compressor is a little messed up. I got a little bit of light up here but nowhere else. Let's see if we can get one more click at it. Nope. Alright, let's try this again. Yeah, you're going to see mistakes on my channel. I don't edit out mistakes. I got a friend of mine that says all the time, Well, why don't these people have problems and these people don't have problems and these? Because they ain't going to show you the problems. But I will because... This is the way shit is. Alright, try it again. Beautiful. Down in there. Yeah, I hate ring compressors. I always did. Anyway, I think my last one I threw it across the shop. We were in the hole. Now, let me get it down a little bit. So you can actually see in the block. Maybe I should get some more light over here. They don't mind the background, I'm watching Stripes. Good movie. Let's get it up against there. I just pulled the bearing out while I'm really screwing up tonight. There we go. That happens too. Sometimes the bearing pops out. Spinning around. That should do. And let's stick our end cap in. Oh, stay there. All right, she don't want to stay. Let's get a let's get a bolt ready. Always, always, I don't give a shit when anybody says you can do it with it, you can do it without it. Always put oil on the threads, or you're not going to get a proper torque spec. Just do it. Doesn't matter what oil. Even if you're using assembly lube, just oil them. And this here too. Put some oil in there. That's where the bolt moves freely when you're torquing it. God, I've worked with people that just run run head bolts and stuff like that in. Because they're too damn lazy. Just to do it right the first time. Run this in by hand. Once again, some Earl here, 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 here. Get nice and oily.
I'm gonna stop myself from pushing this off camera. There you go. I want to wipe my hands off a little bit. Come on, Mr. Camera. There we go. Now we're going to ready to go torque, torque the rod bolts. We're going to torque that to 170 inch pounds. And we're going to start out at 55. No, that's not 55. This damn thing is so hard to see. Right, that's 55. And where's my bolt at? Or not my bolt, the socket. Let's move it a little bit. Come on camera, focus. Let's see. That's a better angle. That one's 55. Get the other one on. There we go. Come on. There we go. at 55 let's go up to 100 now hundred inch pounds do the first one again focus on the block there we go hundred We're at 100. All right, let's go up to 170. That's at 160. Add 10 more. 70. Seventy. One seventy and one seventy. Good to go. Also, when you store your torque wrench, don't leave it all the way up. Bring it all the way back down. Apparently it's good for the calibration. That's good enough. All right. That back in the container. Now, check if it rotates. Feels good. No need for the plastic gauge. But. I'm gonna put some more. Well, I'm gonna do it now. Is now we're gonna put assembly lube in the cylinder. That cylinder nice and gooey. I don't want it dry starting. There we go.
perfect and it is right there at zero deck uh, I believe from the factory the piston is about 20 thousandths down in the cylinder by getting this rod the 20 thousandths longer ARC rod you're putting the piston right at zero deck which increases compression which increases horsepower that's what everybody wants want more horsepower now if I got had the money the budget to put a flat top in here I would have but the budget only allowed a rod in the piston uh, rod in the flywheel all right time for a cam stock cam putting a stock cam in it like I said because of the budget but later on I'm gonna put some stamped 1.3 rockers in it they're cheap but they do the job Move that up. Put some on there. The stock cams ain't bad. We'll one three rockers on them. Got a lot of low end torque. I'll put put fluid. Yeah, I'll put the assembly lube on that later. Hopefully, I ain't even looking down. Hopefully, I got it on camera. All right. Lifters. Where are my lifters at? What's the shit that I do with the lifters? You gotta stick them up in there first. An assembly lube on them. Put it on camera. There we go. Assembly lube's nice because it holds them up in there also. that up in there camshaft in that dot right there is going to line up with the dot right there camera probably ain't going to pick up that dot because the camera is pretty shitty and it's just stick it in there there we go uh, give me a rag. Casting okay, the shadow here. There you go. Now you can see it lined up. All right. Maybe I should move the other light over here. I don't have so much of a shadow. It's a little better. Now I'm going to start tripping over lights. Alright, so. Cranks in. Tightened up. Cams in. Let's put the side cover on. I know this ain't too exciting, but some people don't know how to do this stuff. And some people are intimidated by it. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. We got uh, somebody Loctited that before. Alright, I'm going to go scoop up a gasket. There we go. Like I buy packs of these on, I think it was Amazon. Amazon rebate for dirt cheap. Always good to have. Let me zoom out. There we go. Always good to have. And this lighting is getting on my last nerve. I don't know why the lighting is so terrible. Alright. Let's keep, keep moving. This damn video is long enough now. No, nobody really wants to hear me babbling. Mm -hmm. 
Blew that up. Put the side cover on. There we go. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Alright, shut up. I'm get some side cover bolts out here. Torque these down a little bit later. Right. Now we got a short block. Uh, let's get the flywheel ground in a shaft. We clean up some of this goo all over the place. You get a new flywheel, you have to put some valve grinding compound on here and ground it down to the shaft. Helps it to seat better. It's easy to do. Valve grinding compound, you get it at any parts store. Put a little bit there. Stick your flywheel on. It's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I should have the crank locked up, but I don't. It's not too much of a big deal. I'll put the crank lock on it, though, when I torque this down. Let's see. What are we looking like? All right. All right, you can see that gray area right there. Uh, let me zoom in. There we go, that gray area. That's the area that it's ground into. Perfect, good. We'll do it some more because why not? All right. Got to clean all that off. Why the hell does this look so dark? All these damn lights and it's so dark. Let me try getting a light overhead. Man, that's worse. I think it doesn't help that the block is a dark color. Alright, whatever. Let's get us all cleaned out. You know your compound out of there. Another compound out of here. Normally I'd use brake clean or something like that, but I have none. I have to go buy another case. I used most of it to kill the damn cockroaches. There you go. It's nice and clean. Put the key in. Let's find the key. This is going to be fun. I actually have no idea where I put all the nuts and bolts for this particular engine at. Okay, I this light on. Come on, put that on. There we go. That helps a little bit.
Come on, I need a flywheel key. There we go. Come on, flywheel key. There we go. That go in there. Is it for this motor? Please be for this motor. There we go. All right. Let me put the flywheel key in. Come on, get over. Get over a little bit. put your flywheel key on you want the back since it's tapered the back's gonna be lower than the front the front's gonna be up a little higher that's what you want it at you don't want it level with the crank you want the back down further let me tap it in more all right See if she locks on there nicely. Help if I, uh, there we go. Alright, she's on. Nice. Put a starter cup on. That little hole right there. Put it on camera. That little hole right there is going to go with that hole. Hold on. Uh, we're gonna run that down. Just run it down for now because I'm gonna lock the motor down, torque that, torque the head, torque the side cover bolts. Gonna get in in there for now. Come on, back out. There we go. There it goes. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Let's put the head on. And the surface off. All right. Uh, what did I do with the head? There it is. Head's right there. Let me get a head gasket. There we go. Yeah, make sure it's a 212 head gasket. Yeah, and it is. Make sure I ain't throwing a 196 head gasket on there by accident. And it is a 196 head gasket. Son of a bitch. Alright, hold on. I am going to go dig and find a 212 one. Alright, I'm back. Found a gasket. It's used, but it was off a brand new engine. It's not technically used. These steel gaskets, though, you can reuse them. I've done it millions of times. Not not literally. Alright. Put the head on. Looks good. Some new head bolts. Trying to get some nice chromey head bolts. Go. Oil. Oil these two. Oil up in there. Oil all the threads. Always oil. You can get a proper torque spec. Alright. 
I'm gonna just gently run these down just to seat the head. All right. This head already has 22 pound valve springs in it. Cause I already poured it and polished it for a project I was supposed to do that I wound up not doing. So, let's get ready to torque everything. Yeah. I'll bring it over here. Can't really see it on camera, but So they're mounted to a bracket under my table. I just whack, whack the thing, pop it up, and stick the motor on. Yeah, I'm the only asshole out there that destroys his own coffee table, but it is what it is. Bolt the motor down. Now, it's secure enough to torque down. Let's do the head first. Uh, these could be 200 inch pounds or I believe 25 foot pounds. We're just going to do 25 foot pounds because I got... A new another torque wrench that I just bought. This thing's pretty it's pretty sexy. Amazon. This has foot pounds on it. So I found when I, I was building a 301 for somebody. I did not have anything in foot pounds and all the specs for that one were in foot pounds. Alright. Can't really see because I'm using a shitty camera, but it's set to 25. Oh, uh, yeah. Give me this. And where the hell is my 12 millimeter? 12, 12, 12. I have it still on impact gun, that's why. Twenty-five foot pounds. And I'm just gonna before I even have at it. It's a little. Bring it down slowly. Let me tighten these bolts. Tighten these bolts because it's going to drive me back. Shit, that's moving around. Now I'm happy. Yeah, let's go for it. You're gonna do it in a crossfire pattern. If you're starting with this one, go, uh, you know, a crossfire pattern. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. 25. Oh, there's nothing wrong with this ratchet because what the hell?
Don't like that. What the hell's going on here? Oh, please tell me this block ain't stripped. What the hell? Uh, let me... Alright, I'm back. I got it off camera. Yada, yada, yada. Stupid ass bullshit. Never had problems like this before. But of course. Anyway, I'm going to do the side covers now. Actually, I'm going to only do these because they are factory bolts. We're going to do that. We're going to do them at 20. Twenty and crossfire pattern. Twenty. Go up here. Twenty. Come down, meow. Twenty. 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 And go back and check them. Twenty. Twenty. Yep. Uh-huh. Good to go. Now let's do the flywheel bolt. That thing's got to go to 80. This is going to be fun. Zoom out a little bit. Like I said, people have done this all over. It's been done to death. But, I'm going to do it again to show people not to be intimidated by it. Alright. Oh, ain't going to help unless I lock the fly though now, is it? Or lock the motor. Made this in a previous video. I got the video on there. Just simple 30 series driver drilled out. And just in case nobody's seen that video, because why the hell would they? Stick it on there. Come on. Bolts in the side cover. Come on. I don't have to run them all the way in. Just a little. Probably only have to put a two in. But we're going to put all four in because why the hell not? All right. Now we're all nice and locked up. Now we can torque that down. Come on. There we go. We are at 80. I do like to torque these because I had a I used to use just this to put them down, and I had a flywheel starting to come loose, but I caught it. And thank God I didn't destroy it. Alright, let's take the bolts out, and I just, I think I just bent one. Makes zero sense. I don't think I bent when I just I messed up the threads in the block. Yeah, 
Yeah, it'd be alright. Look like one was bent. Alright, so our head's torqued, uh, side cover bolts, and a flywheel bolt. Let's get it off of here. Alright, I'm back. Got the motor off. This cute little friggin' mount that I made. And they just stay there because it's actually screwed underneath. Alright. Enough of that. Now we're going to put the rocker arm assembly in. Ow. That's a damn metal on my finger. <clears throat> anyway. Take your push rods. There's actually a little puddle in there, so we'll stick them in there. Stick them in the little puddle. Stick them down in their uh, lifters. And they're lined up in the lifters. We are going to stick them. Rocker arms on. I don't wind up putting one three stamped, but I'm gonna put these on here for now just to show uh, people how to adjust them. Little slop there. Put that there. Some more slop. Come on. There we go. You can get a little closer. Yeah, I know my production value sucks ass, but I'm broke. I'm gonna stick these on here first. I'm not really gonna oil them because I'll oil them when I get them set. Run them down. That should be tap dead center because I can see the piston is all the way to the top. So you can see the piston. That's the piston. It's all the way up the top. And we're going to adjust them. Oh, Christ. What do I do with the feeler gauges? There we go. Already prepared. And we're going to adjust these to three thousandths. I have a friend of mine, he doesn't understand how to do this, so it's a good it's good for me to do this to show people. See so that you can see the three thousands. Simply stick her in there, back this off. It can go in there. A little bit of resistance, not much. Stick your jam nut on. Fourteen millimeter, they're fourteens. Jam nut is ten. Snug. Snug it up. That's too tight. Just a little too tight. So take this, the fourteen, and back it off a little bit. Even though the jam nut's on there, it's actually just gonna make this tighter. The jam nut's not moving. And that's good. It's moving. So, that is pretty good right there. Take your wrench. Put some tension on it. Take your jam nut. Make sure you don't move this wrench. And tight. That's it. These really don't come loose. Not like some other rockers where you gotta use Loctite. Same thing for the other side. Moves a little bit. Get your jam nut on. 
Take your 14, take your 10, run your 10 down. Tight, don't want to come out. Take your 14, start backing off. Damn, not wanted to move that time. A little more, back off. Back off a little more. That's good. Put some tension on that, your 14, take your 10, tighten it down. It's that easy. They still move like they're supposed to. Now, you're gonna spin the motor and check. Looks good, that one's still loose. That one's still down. Move this down a little bit. This one's down. Your exhaust valve, intake valve still closed. Feels good. Now your exhaust valve is up and your intake's down. Intake's nice and tight. Looks good. That'll do. Nice. Next, we are going to set the coil gap. When you stick your coil on, you can barely see this because the block is black. These are your magnets. I believe there's two on there. It fires twice. Move it around to where there's no magnet. And I'll show you why in a second. The gap on these, with these, should be no less than 30 thousands. So, they say 30 to 40 thousands. I just go in between. I do 35 thousands. 35 thousands. Alright, we get a coil. There's a coil. And some coil bolts. found some coil bolts I would love to know what I did with the actual nuts and bolts for this particular motor I have no idea what I did with thank god I got stuff laying around down with an impact because I still got to set the gap. Alright, can I still move? No, I can't still move. Let's back it off a little bit. There we go. Alright. 35 thousandths. Stick it in there. Push it up against it. Stick it in. Push it up against it. Yeah, we gotta do bottom over again. Just gotta get it close. Just snug it up. Do the top one. Snug it up. Get your feeler gauge through there. Get your feeler gauge through there. Good to go. Tighten it up. That's that for that part. Run your wire across here. That'll go to the spark plug. And for now, that's pretty much it.
I'm not going to dress the motor yet because the tins are going to be orange. The gas tank is going to be orange. Probably the valve cover. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with a carb yet. Whether I'll just be a nice guy and get him one of them carbs. Zoom in. Or if he's got a if he's got a better budget, or just put a stock carb on it, which I'm gonna to try to bore out myself. But there you go, a nice little 212 quick build. And that's that. Thanks for watching.